okay hello guys uh, today i am starting with the, the first booklet of the revision notes and this is based on chapter number 1 and 2 for you okay uh, so we are going to be solving a few questions from the revision notes and from this uh, booklet in particular there are only 13 questions okay and i am almost going to solve all of them because each question is a bit unique and students often struggle with these questions uh, uh, because uh, for the reason that uh, they do not require application of uh, direct formulas but rather they require uh, the application of first principle so if your first principles are strong uh, you can actually easily solve these questions so there are no direct formula for these you will have to have a good intuitive knowledge about the subject okay so i'm going to teach you how to solve these questions how to deal with them although i've covered everything that is required for them uh, let's just start with with the question analysis question okay so i'm not doing the short question no point doing them you can try them by yourself and they're pretty easy i'm doing only the exam style questions okay so uh, basically here i am doing the question analysis question number one okay there's only one question in question analysis and um, for this question you need some background okay although most of you must know this but i am just listing these three things here uh, which are required uh, for for solving this question so that even if you don't know or you have forgotten you don't struggle okay the first thing is that the integral of e to the power of kt with respect to t is just e to the power of kt divided by k okay so uh, that is your integration and e to the power of minus infinity is equal to zero this is something you must know okay since we know e to the power of infinity is equal to infinity and e to the power of minus infinity equal to zero so uh, these are basically two properties that you should know okay and one more thing is this is from subject cd1 it is that e to the power of minus delta t that is uh, the discounting factor in terms of the force of interest because delta is the force of interest is same as the weight of the power of t that is the discounting factor in terms of uh, your rate of interest okay it provided that we can convert the force of interest into the rate of interest and the other way around so for for the equivalent uh, force of interest and rate of interest these factors are just the same so these are the few things that you need to know let's start with the question okay the question says we need to calculate the variance of the present value of a benefit under an annuity payable to a life age 35 exact so there is a person who is age 35 exact and there are annual payments uh, the, the and there is an annuity being paid to him continuously okay uh, it says that the annuity payments of one per annum are payable continuously so there is a continuous annuity payable to him and uh, uh, from the age of 35 onwards and it's a whole life annuity so for such a contract we need to calculate its variance okay and the problem with this question is that we require direct application of first principles we need to use integration here because they have not specified any mortality table rather they have specified uh, the value of the force of interest and the force of mortality so mu and uh, and delta are basically given here mu is the force of mortality and delta is the force of interest so let's just solve this okay so i need the variance of basically a continuous tx right this is what i need this is the value of the present value random variable and i need the variance of this thing right and since this is payable at every moment okay so the variance formula as we know it and i've taught you already is 1 over delta square into 2 a immediate x minus a immediate x whole square right so uh, we need to evaluate these immediate uh, immediate uh, assurance functions in order to calculate the value of this annuity and then divide them by the uh, square of the force of interest which is given okay so basically we need uh, three things here we need uh, first thing we need is a contain a immediate x that is an assurance function and then we need two a immediate x okay which is the assurance function uh, calculated at uh, like uh, the discounting factor squared up okay so these are the two things that we need so the formula for this is obviously in we'll write it in integration form instead of the summation form because 
the payments happen as soon as the person dies okay so this basically goes from zero to infinity obviously because uh, this can happen uh, this is a whole life uh, assurance contract payable uh, immediately on the death of the person so when uh, are the payments due the payments are due as soon as the person dies so probability that a person aged x lives for t years okay and then he has to die immediately so it's mu x plus t okay and then this is multiplied with uh, the discounting factor that is v to the power of t and this is multiplied with dt okay so this is what you have here for the formula so now uh, substituting the values this is just 0 to infinity uh, tpx would be basically tp35 because the person is aged 35 although that does not matter this is mu 35 plus t and this becomes vt dt okay so these are the things that we have now let's just uh, put the value of these things see since we know tp35 what is the formula for tpx tpx is basically equal to e to the power of minus integral going from 0 to t mu x plus s ds right you know this formula it is basically uh, saying all this is basically saying is that uh, uh, that this is a force of mortality of a person dying and the negative sign means uh, that this does not happen and going from 0 to t means that uh, uh, that this uh, it can happen over a possibility of, of time uh, from time 0 to time t so i'm taking a negative sign so that this does not happen so this is the probability that a person does not die or lives for at least t years right so that is what we need here okay so this is the formula if I if I were to simplify this, since uh, mu uh, t uh, mu x plus s is given here and it is a constant, and the value given for mu x plus s is basically um, it's basically let's call the value mu okay for once so that I can show you what happens when mu is constant. So if this is constant, this just uh, this this is just a constant, right? So this just becomes mu comes outside, and this goes from zero to t dt, right? And integral of one is obviously t right so uh, and and uh, putting putting the i'm sorry this is ds okay this is ds so putting uh, the value of uh, t at this point it just becomes e to the power of minus mu t when you when you uh, actually have a constant force of interest i'm going, going to show you this now wait i can show you okay, this just becomes e to the power of minus mu okay and the integral is s and instead of s you have to put 0 and t right the limits are 0 and t when i put t this just becomes e to the power of minus mu t 0 it just cancels out uh, there's there's no zero term right so this is your uh, formula for tp35 so and uh, since in this question mu is uh, given constant at the uh, why i call mu constant is because it is not dependent on time okay it is not a function of time that means mu is constant of t Okay, and uh, in in this uh, question, mu is given to be 0.02. Okay, uh, so this is something I know. Uh, so this can be written as 0 to infinity e to the power of minus 0.02t. Okay, that is what I can write. This mu uh, 35 plus t again, it is a constant, so it is 0 0.02, right? And vt, vt is basically e to the power of minus delta t, as I told you. And delta here is given to be 0 0.05, so it is 0 0.05t, and this multiplied with the factor dt. Okay, so now let's just let's just see what is happening here. Uh, these uh, two powers add up, so it becomes e to the power of minus 0 0.07t into 0 0.02dt. Right, right. That's how it happens. Uh, and uh, now what I can do is I can integrate this up. So 0 0.02, since being a constant, comes outside integrating this it becomes uh, e to the power of minus 0 0.070 divided by minus 0 0.07 okay and going uh, since uh, the integral of e to the power of kt is equal to e to the power kt divided by k okay and going from 0 to infinity i can just put the limits now so it just becomes 0 0.02 uh, divided by i'm taking the 0 0.07 out okay inside i just have a minus e to, uh, this minus sign remains so it is just e to the power of minus 0.07 into infinity and minus of 
minus e to the power of minus 0 0.07 into 0 putting the limits infinity here and 0 here okay so i have just uh, just evaluated this okay and now uh, what happens is uh, this uh, these minus signs they just they just adjust okay inside uh, see this is e to the power of minus infinity basically this is e to the power of minus infinity minus into uh, because 0 0.07 into infinity is infinity and this is e to the power of minus infinity so it just becomes 0 it becomes 0 plus because minus and minus cancel out to be plus and e to the power of 0 so anything to the power of 0 is 1 so this just becomes 0 0.02 upon 0 0.07 that is 2 by 7 right so that is how it solves now uh, now let's just solve the other part okay let's just do the other part so i've got a 2a uh, continuous x uh, so this is basically uh, calculated at the uh, discounting factor squared up so this just becomes going from 0 to infinity tpx into mu x plus t okay and v to the power of 2t instead of v to the power of t okay so this is this is what i have let's just evaluate this let's just evaluate this so this just becomes going from uh, 0 to infinity e to the power uh, tpx remains same it is e to the power of minus 0.02t okay mu x plus t also remains same it is 0 0.02 and the v to the power of 2t term it just becomes e to the power of minus now it's two times the force of interest 2 into 0 0.05 t right dt so this is what i have here and now 0 0.02 comes outside okay uh, these these powers they add up for uh, this e so 0 to infinity it's e to the power of minus 0 0.02 t minus 2 into 0 0.05 okay so this just becomes a 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 and this adds up with uh, 0 0.02 so it just becomes minus 0 0.12 t okay and uh, and uh, dt right this is what i have let's just integrate it it is 0 0.02 integrating this becomes e to the power of minus 0 0.12 t divided by 0 0.12 okay so going from 0 to infinity right so uh, this this just becomes if if i put the values this is 0 0.02 this this is negative of course divided by minus 0 um, i'm, I'm not, not going to take the minus sign here so it's uh, 0 0.12 inside i just have minus e to the power of minus 0 0.12 t and going from 0 to infinity okay now uh, now let's just put this infinity and 0 in this so if if i do that i just get this is uh, 0 0.12 upon uh, 0.12 it just becomes 1 by 6 right 2 and 12 okay and if i put uh, infinity in place of this it is 0 and if i put 1 uh, if i put 0 it is just 1 so minus of minus 1 so I just have a 1 by 6 left with me okay so that's what's left so now I uh, now that I have both of these values I can just put them into the expression and get my variance okay so very 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 simple thing to do a very very simple thing to do let's just do that okay I've tried to be as elaborate as I can my, most of you might have been bored because I was detailing about upon really really easy things but I don't want any of you to struggle with this okay so I'm going to evaluate this this is just 1 over see I have got a delta square so delta was 0 0.05 right this squared up into I've got this value it is 1 by 6 minus this value was 2 by 7 and squared up okay so this uh, this thing if you solve it it comes out to be 34.014 and this is your answer that is given in the code elements okay so uh, this is uh, how you solve uh, such questions okay so um, i hope you got it okay let's just move on to the next question and this is basically the first question of your uh, past exam questions given in the revision notes okay so let's just start this it says that a let x be a random variable okay so it is a random variable representing the present value of benefits of a whole life assurance contract okay so basically x is the pvrv present value random variable of a whole life assurance okay
and uh, let y be the random variable representing the present value of the benefits of a temporary assurance. So y is basically equal to the present value random variable of a temporary assurance. Okay. Uh, that's what it says. With the term of n years, so uh, the temporary assurance has a term of n years. Both assurances have a sum assured of one. Okay, so these are both unit uh, assurances. Payable at the end of the year of death. Okay, they are not payable immediately. They are payable at the end of the year of death. And were issued to the same life age X. Okay, so they are issued to the same person who is aged X. Describe the benefits provided by the contract, which has a present value represented by the random variable x minus one. So what it is asking us is the first part is asking us that if I take a contract x minus y, what would be the benefit under the contract? Okay. So uh, obviously this since this is a whole life assurance, if I draw a timeline, a whole life assurance issued to a life aged x at time zero, this is paying perpetual benefit. This, this would uh, pay uh, payment at the end of the year of death of a person and this goes on forever. Okay. And uh, if, if I talk about why it is only paying such benefits till time n, okay. So uh, if, if x dies before time n, there is a payment of uh, of one pound, and if he dies after time n, there is no such payment, okay. So if I deduct uh, y from x, it just uh, what remains is the uh, payments on death of uh, the life aged x going from n to infinity. So it is just a deferred annuity, a deferred assurance contract. Uh, which is deferred by uh, a term of n years. So uh, we can write the answer of this the first part. So um, x minus y represents the present value random variable for a deferred assurance contract of one pound payable to a life aged x at the end of the year of death okay and you can also mention it that it is deferred by n years so i'm going to mention it in a bracket so this is this is just deferred by n years. Okay, let's look at the second part now. So the second part says uh, that show that the covariant of x and y is basically equal to this. Okay, so they want us to show uh, that the covariance would turn out to be this. In order to get this, we, we need to actually write the value of x and y. Okay, so let's just do that. So what is the value of x? Okay, x is basically equal to, um, it is basically equal to v to the power of kx plus 1. Okay, No matter what is the value of kx. But uh, in order to adjust x and y, because I have to deduct y out of x, I'm going to write it in a different fashion. I'll write it as v to the power of kx plus 1 when kx is less than n and v to the power of kx plus 1 the same thing when kx is greater than or equal to n okay so in either of the cases x has the same value if i talk about y y is the present value random variable of a temporary annuity so a benefit is on, a v to the power of kx plus 1 that is the at the end of the year there is a benefit payable only if kx is less than n okay and if uh, if kx is greater than n so it is just zero okay so benefit is zero greater than equal to n okay uh, so this is your y okay so if if i uh, if someone asks me the value of uh, the covariance of these two okay so uh, the formula for covariance of uh, two uh, random variables x and y this is from subject ct3 is equals to expectation of x into y minus expectation of x into expectation of y okay so this is the formula that you have so uh, for, for this purpose, what do I need? I need to multiply x and y actually. I need x, y. I need this random variable x, y. So if I multiply these two, if I actually try to multiply these two, 
see uh, when kx is less than n what does it become v to the power of kx plus 1 i'm multiplying x into y okay so uh, it just becomes v to the power of kx plus 1 into v to the power of kx plus 1 okay so if these two multiply up it just becomes v to the power of uh, they just square up so it's v to the power of 2 into kx plus 1 okay so i've just squared this number and when I multiply for kx is greater than or equal to n, 0 into v to the power of kx plus 1 is just 0. Okay, So that is what you have here. So it's just uh, kx is greater than or equal to n. So this is your value for xy. Uh, when when this is uh, this is the case. Okay, And if if I talk about uh, expectation of x and uh, now now we can actually evaluate the covariance. So the expectation of x into y. This is basically v square kx plus 1 right uh, so what what this means is uh, basically um, if, if I take the expectation of this thing expectation of this thing it is just a temporary annuity but evaluated at squared interest rate so I can just write this as 2a x n with a 1 over x right uh, because because the EPV of uh, of a temporary annuity remains the same, it just uh, it is just that it is evaluated at squared interest rate. Okay, so this uh, two term comes here. Okay, so this is obviously evaluated at an interest rate of uh, interest rate of uh, i plus one whole square minus one. Okay, or it is usually written as i square plus two i. Okay, so it is evaluated at this interest rate, right? Uh, for this part, expectation of x is obviously ax, right? Whole life annuity. And expectation of y is obviously ax n with a 1 over x. Okay. So this is what uh, what your covariance term would be, and this is your answer for the for the second part actually. Okay, so you have to remember this. Okay, uh, now let's just uh, this was your second part. So uh, we have actually proved whatever they required, whatever was given in the question. Okay. Now let's just move on to the third part. Okay. So uh, uh, third uh, part says that uh, they want the variance of x minus y, um, and they, we have to prove it to be this this term actually. Okay. So let's just do that, and uh, I'm gonna make it easy for you. Okay. So nothing complicated here. It is just that. We know that variance of a minus b or the variance of x minus y is basically equal to the variance of x plus variance of y minus two times the covariance of x comma y. So this is a standard formula for variance that is uh, given in your subject CT3. And I, I hope you know this. Okay, if you don't, you just need to recall it and uh, you know you need to put it inside your brain. Okay. So this is your formula. Okay. So since we have the covariance, we just need to use the variance of x and y and you know evaluate this formula. So the variance of x is obviously 2ax minus ax square. Okay, since this is a whole life assurance. Okay, if I talk about the variance of y, it is just 2a x n with a 1 over x minus a x n with a 1 over x and i just square it up okay so this i've just put the formula for um that variance is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole squared okay minus two times the covariance okay what uh, the, the term we found found out just now okay so i need to put that uh, that expression here uh, and then simplify things okay so let's just do that just hold on a second. Uh, where did it go okay so i have this and uh, okay yeah so i have to put the uh, covariance expression here so it's just 2 a x 1 n okay 2 a x 1 n minus a x into a x 1 n so this is uh, this is the expression that i have here and now what i need to do is i need to evaluate this open it up and simplify it uh, to be that expression which is given there okay 
uh, actually this will come out to be uh, the variance of a deferred annuity that is what we are finding out using my okay so let's just do this this is just 2ax minus ax square okay plus 2a x n with a 1 over it minus a x 1 n square minus 2 a x 1 n okay and uh, my plus 2 a x into a x 1 n okay so there are some sort of uh, sort of adjustments involved here see what we have is we have got a 2 a x we have got a, a x square here okay and and uh, i have got a a x 1 n uh, square okay so i have the square of these two and i have a 2 a x x 1 n a x 1 n term 2 okay so these three i can add them up to be a whole square okay so what i'm doing is i'm taking a minus sign common okay i'm taking a minus sign common out of these three terms that i have underlined not this one this one two and three okay these three terms i'm taking a minus sign common it just becomes a x square okay and this one it becomes plus a x 1 n okay and uh, squared obviously and uh, the this one becomes minus because i've taken a minus common a x into a x 1 n right so this this thing that is how it solves out and what are the remaining terms the remaining terms are basically this one okay one and this one two and this one three okay so uh, these two they adjust up 2a x1 n and minus uh, two times 2a x1 n actually this is two times this okay so uh, these two terms they adjust up this is a uh, plus 2a x1 n and this is minus 2 times uh, 2 a x 1 n okay so this is what I have here see when this multiplies with this we have got a 2 into uh, 2 a x 1 n so this just becomes a minus a x 1 n okay because I had uh, two negatives and a uh, positive so that just they just become this and um, I'm just left with this part okay this this term so it just becomes uh, plus 2 a x okay so this is this is what i have here now let's just simplify everything this just becomes minus this is a x minus a x 1 n whole square okay and this part it just becomes plus 2 a x minus a x 1 n okay now you are gonna see some magic happening here uh, see ax minus ax1 n we already know this is uh, the formula for a deferred annuity so this is just minus of um, n deferred ax whole squared and this part obviously you know again this is a formula uh, there was a 2 here I'm sorry pardon me there was a 2 here uh, so uh, this formula you already know this uh, adjusts up to um, the the deferred annuity but at a squared rate of interest so this just becomes your plus 2 n deferred ax okay so this is what i have here and in order to write this simply this is just 2 n deferred ax minus n deferred ax whole square okay and uh, i think That's how they require it in uh, in the in the question. Actually, they uh, wanted us to uh, leave it at this step itself. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at this step. Um, I'm going to write this part and leave this part. This just becomes two a x, okay, minus two a x one n, okay, and uh, and I'm going to uh, write this whole square separately. So this just becomes minus and effort ax whole square okay so uh, this is how they they wanted us to answer in the question okay? that's what they wanted to prove so this is hence proved okay 
So uh, this is how you solve this question. Okay, so the next two questions, they are a repetition, okay, kind of a repetition. So I want you to try them by yourself. I am not going to solve them for you and you should check out the solutions uh, if you if you struggle. So I think you will get them. Okay, I'm not going to spoon feed you the entire thing. I want you to try things by yourself too because I won't be there in your exams. Uh, for this question, I have got a small hint for you. Question number two. It is that uh, the variance of x plus y is basically equal to the variance of x plus variance of y plus two times covariance of x and y. Okay, so uh, basically what happens here is uh, instead of that minus sign in the last question, I've got a plus sign here. Okay, and uh, it asks uh, you to uh, basically take two random variables like I did in the last uh, last last uh, part. Okay, and uh, one is a pure endowment. And uh, the other one is, uh, I think, a, it must be a term assurance, okay? And it wants you to combine them in order to get the variance for an endowment assurance, okay? So, uh, you will have to actually uh, write down the formula for the present value random variable of x. You'll have to write a formula for the present value of random, uh, random variable of y. And then you will have to actually add them up and then take a variance, okay? Uh, First, take the covariance, obviously, and then take a co uh, then take a variance. Okay, so I think you will be able to solve this. Okay, let's not spoon feed you. Uh, question number three is actually same as the one we did in uh, in the question analysis. It's the exact same question. Okay, so practice it again or don't uh, see whatever you want to do with this, but it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so next we have got uh, question number four and what I like to qu call such questions are coconut questions. Okay? It's a coconut. Uh, the thing with this is that uh, it's it looks hard on the outside, but it's pretty soft in, on the inside. Okay, or, or you can call it a melon too, whatever you want. So basically this melon question, we are going to solve it uh, and it's easy. It says that give an expression for the expected present value of a benefit of one under a critical in illness assurance okay so there is this critical illness assurance some sort of assurance which uh, uh, pays you uh, pays a healthy life uh, some amount of money that is one one pound of money whenever the person falls ill okay so this is just same as a person dying okay no big deal about it and for a term of n years so it is basically your uh, your temporary uh, temporary uh, assurance contract okay so i just need to give an integral expression for it nothing big deal about it so the expected present value is basically going from 0 to t right because or oh, 0 to n because uh, it's a n year term contract okay when when is the payment uh, due the payment would be due when the person uh, becomes critically ill so i'll write it as um i did write it as px t obviously but with the i over it because I, I want to denote critical illness and differentiate it from a death contract. So I just write PXT with the I over it. No big deal about it. Okay. Into uh, the person has to first live 40 years and then die immediately. So it's mu X plus T with I. Okay. And uh, uh, when he dies, there will be a payment due. That payment would be VT. Okay. So it would be uh, a VT multiplied with it into DT. Okay. So this is your uh, expression for this and uh, this is basically your answer and this can happen between 0 and n. So in order to remove any confusion here, I'm going to repeat this definition once again. So uh, all this is saying is that uh, a person aged x has to uh, uh, be be uh, alive, uh, be healthy till time t. Okay, so tpx i then he has to fall ill at time t so mu x plus t i okay and then there is a payment of 1 pound only the payment is not actually uh, the payment is not actually uh, your uh, vt the payment is of 1 pound but since it is discounted back till time 0 there is a vt factor and then we can take all these possibilities going from 0 to n Okay, now the next question is question number five and I should not even, you know, touch this, but uh, because I have already uh, solved this while uh, while solving chapter number two with you guys, I, I have actually done this proof, but still I am going to do it again so that, you know, no doubt is left in your hearts. 
so it says that uh, derive an expression for the variance of the present value of a temporary annuity due so there is a temporary annuity due okay that is payable in advance obviously that's why it's a due contract and it is temporary in nature okay and uh, in terms of the assurance functions of a life age dex for a term of n years so i need to find the variance of a temporary annuity due that is a due um a due basically all this says is uh, if it's for n years right so if if the person dies uh, before n there is a payment of a kx plus 1 right and if he dies after time n there is a payment of a n right that is what it is okay uh so basically this is uh, this is, this can be written as the present value random variable can be written as a uh, kx a due i'm sorry this these are advanced statements a due kx plus 1 okay when kx is less than n and a due n when kx is greater than equal to n right so that's how things are so basically um, whichever is less it uh, becomes in the the bracket under the the adu function so it's just the minimum of these two so it's the minimum of kx plus 1 comma n right so that's what i can write this as now let's just uh, let's just solve for the variance so this just becomes variance of 1 minus v to the power of minimum of kx plus 1 comma n right right that's what it becomes over d right so d comes outside it's 1 over d square variance of independent of uh, origin so v to the power of minimum of kx plus 1 comma n right so this is uh, this is what i have here now i can actually uh, simplify this if if i talk about One over d square. If if I talk about this this part to you, v to the power of minimum of kx plus one. What is this? This is v to the power of kx plus one when kx is less than n, and v to the power of n uh, when kx is greater than or equal to n. Right? That is what it is. So uh, this is basically basically your uh, endowment assurance contract. Right? It is paying uh, at the end of the year of death when uh, Uh, when your um, what was I saying? Yeah, when the person dies before time n, and when uh, when he dies after time n, the payment is at time n. So this is basically your endowment assurance contract, and I need to. Uh, it is the present value random variable of your uh, endowment assurance contract, and uh, I need to write the variance of it. So variance would be two a x n right minus a x n whole square right so this is uh, this is your answer in term or terms of assurance contract right right so uh, that's how you do it you're fine okay guys so the next question is uh, question number 6 it is pretty straightforward and pretty easy and i think you'll be able to solve it yourself because uh, Uh, when the first time i was solving revision notes i was pretty delighted with this question so you just have to uh, take the value of uh, adu 65 from uh, at the am 92 tables and just apply this formula okay i've given you a hint and i think you'll be able to solve this so no point uh, discussing this with you so let's move on to question number 7 okay uh, so question number 7 show using the random variables approach that the expected uh, present value of an annuity of 1 per annum payable annually in arrears to a life now aged x deferred n years is equal to ax minus axn that is it is just asking us to prove that the expected present value of a deferred annuity is the difference of the expected present value of a temporary annuity and a Uh, the expected present value of a whole life annuity minus a uh, the expected present value of a temporary annuity so that is uh, that is what i intend to prove here 
and I need to do this using the random variables approach. That is, I need to use the present value random variables in order to do this. So let us just do this. Uh, let's say uh, the present value random variable for a whole life annuity payable in arrears is uh, for a whole life annuity payable in arrears is basically equal to um, it would be a kx right that's what the present value random variable is because uh, there are only there's no payment uh, i i know you must be getting a bit confused between um, uh, why why i take a due kx plus one and why i take uh, ax plus one akx just this right uh, i have already explained this to you because when when you uh, take a when you take a, a annuity payable in advance there are basically payments happening at time 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth till infinity, right? And when, when I talk about a pre, uh, annuity payable in arrears, the payments start at time 1, okay? So basically this payment at 0, this payment is not happening here, okay? So basically the payments are one more in case of a, uh, in case of a, uh, an annuity payable in advance, okay? That's why it's just a AKX in case of a, annuity payable in arrears and if if I write this uh, in a different form I can just write this as a k x when k x is uh, greater than n uh, when k x is less than n sorry and when k x is greater than equal to n still it would be a k x so it is irrespective of the value of k x it is a k x right if I talk about the present value random variable of a temporary annuity Let's let's call this one X, okay? And let's call this one Y. So basically this one it becomes A um, KX when KX is less than N and 0 when KX is greater than or equal to N, right? Because there is no payment in case of a, a temporary annuity after I'm sorry, no, it won't be zero. It would be a n when k, uh, k is uh, greater than n because uh, there would have been only n payments by this time, okay? So uh, if, if if the person, he dies after time n, if he dies here, he would have already received these n payments, right? In case of a temporary annuity. So uh, this is your equation. And if I, if I uh, take a z equal to x minus y, that is a deferred annuity so it would be a uh, this akx and akx cancel out to be zero when kx is less than n right and it would be akx minus an when kx is greater than equal to zero or greater than equal to n right so uh, that that is uh, what it is okay and uh, now I uh, need to take the expectation of Z, okay? So the expectation of Z is basically equal to the sum of um, the sum of K going from N to infinity AK minus AN this thing multiplied with K deferred QX, right? Actually, I forgot to mention uh, something. I just wrote these um, X and uh, Y terms for your convenience. Okay, you can just start your question from here itself, writing Z directly, because we just need to uh, we just need to express the the expected the present value of Z in terms of the expected present values of X and Y, right? So uh, you can uh, what you can even do is you can just start by writing this uh, Z. Okay, you don't need to write the above step. So you just write this z because you know the present value random variable for uh, for uh, annuity that is payable in uh, arrears deferred annuity that is payable in arrears okay so now i just need to expand this this is a k going from n to infinity a k into k deferred qx right minus a n comes out and k going from n to infinity 
okay that would be it right so uh, this this is something that i can do now let's just expand this and uh, write this in terms of uh, uh, whole life annuity and a temporary annuity let's so the first thing that i need to do is make this part a whole life annuity okay uh, in order to do that actually i i have terms going from n to infinity right and i have got these payments that are happening on the death uh, death of this person aged x uh, uh, when when he actually um dies after time n okay i've got these annuities that are applicable after time and going from n to infinity what i need here is uh the value of these annuities going from 1 to uh 0 to time n right uh, i want all these payments too so then that i can add them up and i can you know uh, make a whole life annuity so i am going to add and subtract something this thing it remains as it is k going from n to infinity um a k and k deferred qx right um i'll i'll just add k going from uh, because these payments will start at time one or i can even incorporate zero because uh, it just doesn't make a difference at zero this term is just zero and i'll just go uh, from zero to n minus one a k into k deferred qx so i'm just doing this in order to make this a whole life annuity using this adjustment minus a n into k goes from n to infinity k deferred qx right and uh, again this term because i've added this i'll have to subtract this so this goes from uh, k going from 0 to n minus 1 a k into k deferred qx right so this this is what i have here amazing let's just uh, uh, add these two so this is just k going from 0 to infinity a k into k deferred qx right this is what i have and this term see i can write this part uh, uh, this is basically the proba uh, these are probabilities that if, if i expand this term if i i do actually expand this term this is just n deferred qx plus n plus 1 deferred qx plus n plus 2 deferred qx okay going up till infinity so we know what this sum is we have uh, time and again solved this this is just the probability that a person lives for at least n years and then dies n plus one years and then dies within the next one year n plus two years and then dies within the next one year so he has to at least survive for n year so this is just npx so i can just write npx in uh, place of this so i'll write minus a n into npx and uh, obviously this this term it stays so i'm going to take the minus sign common out of these two and write this as plus n k going from zero to infinity into a k into k deferred qx okay now uh, some sort of magic is going to happen here see this is basically the definition of if i take k uh, going from one even or zero doesn't make a difference because the k is equal to zero uh, is a zero term i'm going to write this from one one going to infinity a k into k deferred qx okay if i write this like this uh this is basically uh this is basically your uh, whole life annuity uh and it's epv okay so i can just write this as ax okay minus this term if you see this term properly this all this is saying is that if if this person dies between um okay sorry this was n here so this was an n here i did a mistake this was an n minus one here right uh, so uh, all this is saying is that if this per, uh, person dies between time zero and n minus one he will be getting uh, an annuity of a k that is uh, for however many years he must have survived he will would have gotten a annuity uh, annuity payment uh, term payment but if he if he lives after n years he gets a n only that is uh, he gets uh, only uh, payments till time n and there are no more payments so this is basically a definition of a temporary annuity so this is the epv of a temporary annuity so i can write this as a x n and therefore hence proved so basically um your uh, whole life annuity minus your temporary annuity is just equal to n deferred ax that is a deferred annuity okay uh, so the next thing we have uh, is uh, another very straightforward question this is question number eight 
and here we just need to calculate uh, the present value of expected present value and variance of a uh, x120 okay so uh, this is basically just your uh, a temporary annuity payable immediately on death because there is a bar and for a period of 20 years so uh, for this this i am not going to uh, solve this completely again because i have already showed you how to do this in the question analysis part i'm just going to uh, give you a few hints okay hints on this so in order to calculate your expected present value what you need is going from obviously 0 to 20 right this is your expression for uh, a con uh, immediate x 120 right so this is your expression and uh, for this you obviously need uh, the value of tpx into mu x plus t into uh, obviously your uh, e to the power of minus delta t or vt whatever you write it as okay so uh, this is this is how it happens and uh, Basically, if I put these values, it just becomes this is e to the power of minus because since mu is constant, it just becomes e to the power of minus mu t, e to the power of 0 0.03 t, and this this one it becomes 0 0.03, and for this I have e to the power of minus 0 0.05 t, t, t right? And now uh, you can just um, take this uh, 0 0.03 out. You can uh, add their powers, integrate, and you will get an answer. Okay. Uh, for the variance part you just need um 2 a x 120 minus a x 120 squared up okay uh, so these are the two things that you need here and for this this expression this expression i already have here i just need to square it and for this you will uh, take from 0 to 20 um, basically what will happen is this interest factor it will just square up so you'll have tpx into mu x plus t into e to the power of minus 2 delta t right dt and that is what you'll have and you can easily easily solve this in order to get this expression and then deduct this square and then you will uh, get the answer okay so no uh, big deal about this question okay up next i have another uh, really interesting question and uh, this is uh, saying that a life a this is question number nine uh, a life aged 40 exact for purchases an endowment assurance policy whereby the sum assured on survival to age 60 so this is an endowment assurance policy okay that's the first thing you need to know and it is uh, issued to a life aged 40 so x is equal to 40 and your term n is equal to basically 20 more years mm -hmm. since this is still age of 60 years okay and uh, this says that on survival to the age of 60 exact uh, 20,000 benefit is payable okay so uh, survival benefit is 20,000 and a benefit pay and the benefit payable on debt during the term is 10,000. So if he uh, survives till time uh, uh, N, that is 20, uh, he gets a payment of 20,000, okay? So survival benefits is 20,000, SB, okay? And the death benefit is actually uh, 10,000, okay? And death benefits are payable at the end of the year of death. Calculate the expected present value and variance of, uh, of the benefits under this policy okay so what we need here is basically your uh, expected present value and your variance for this policy and the tricky part here is that the uh, amount for your endowment and your assurance is not the same so uh, they are basically using different amounts for endowment and assurance so that is uh, that is an actually a tricky part here okay so we will solve this right now the expected present value of the contract is your first question okay so your expected present value of an endowment assurance contract is usually uh, for example if a is the amount it is usually a into a x n okay that is how you usually get it but since uh, the endowment part is different and assurance part is different I, I'll, I can actually break this up into two parts 
so i can take the uh, term assurance separately and i can take the pure endowment separately so uh, if i take the term assurance separately so 10000 for the term assurance 10000 into a x1 n okay this is what you will have uh, plus 20000 is your survival benefits so 20000 into a x n1 okay so uh, this is what you have okay uh, these are two uh, separate benefits that are happening but i am going to take advantage of something here okay uh, i'm going to actually take 10000 common okay i'm going to take 10000 into um, a x 1 n and this part i am going to write it as 10000 into a x n 1 Plus ten thousand into a x n. Okay, you see what I did here. I actually separated this ten twenty thousand into ten thousand and ten thousand. Now I can just add these two up in order to make a endowment assurance contract. So this just becomes ten thousand into a forty twenty. That is an endowment assurance contract. Uh, and the remaining part is just ten thousand into the Pure endowment whose value would be v to the power of twenty into twenty p forty. Okay, and the reason I did this is uh, simply for the fact that a forty twenty is a value that is directly available in the tables. Okay, so I can take advantage of that fact and I can actually evaluate this directly instead of first taking a. Uh, first uh, using uh, your whole life assurance at age 40 and then using at 60 and then uh, adjusting it and doing so much of hassle i can just take this value directly so i i can now evaluate this directly so this just becomes 10000 into a4020 uh, you can uh, actually refer to your uh, um, your your tables that uh, it it must be given on page number 100 as far as i think it should be on page number 100 i am going to put the value directly not spoon feeding you guys again you need to practice with the tables so no more spoon feeding so i am going to just uh, okay i am giving you opportunities to actually practice these things uh, for yourself instead of you know relying uh, on me for everything and and in this que uh, question if you, if you check the question properly i forgot to mention one thing Uh, they have given the mortality to be AM ninety to select and not AM ninety to ultimate. So I need the AM ninety to select values for this. Okay, so I need this bracket. There is a bracket around forty. Okay, and here too there is a bracket around it. Okay, so I can actually uh, use the bracketed values that are given on the left hand side of page number one hundred one and not a one hundred page number one hundred and not the right hand side ones. Okay, so uh, actually I am using this value. And this value is given there as zero point four six four two three plus ten thousand into okay. And uh, this is basically what is the interest rate here? Four percent. Okay, so no no worries about that. Okay, so and this factor I can write as d sixty over d forty, right? Which is basically equal to eight eighty two point eight five over. This is again your bracketed value. You'll have to take it from the left side of your tables. So this is two zero five two point five four, right? And if you solve this properly, you get the answer as eight nine four three point five five six. Right. Uh, so that is that is actually how you solve this part, and this is your expected present value. So the next part is evaluation of the variance. Okay. So your variance. So for variance, variance is basically the expectation of the present value squared minus expectation of the present value whole square. This is how I can write variance. This is another way. Uh, expectation of the present value uh, square and The expected present value whole squared. So this is basically your uh, your um, you just square your amounts and your interest factor here, and the probabilities remain the same. 
okay uh, so let's calculate the expectation of present value squared okay so e expectation of the present value squared and you have to remember that we are just squaring up the amounts and the interest factors and uh, the rest of it remains the same the probabilities are not squared okay so uh, this just becomes 10000 pounds squared into um 2a 40 120 right because uh, this is uh, this is the term assurance part basically the amount is squared and when the interest factor is squared uh, this this um, assurance function it becomes 2a 4120 right uh, plus obviously plus 20000 pounds this is for for your uh, what is it called the pure endowment part of this so 20000 squared into probability that a person age 40 survives for 20 more years okay multiplied by now uh, the interest factor that is the discounting factor would be squared here so earlier we had v to the power of 20 now it would be squared okay so i just have v to the power of 40 now basically that is what is happening here let's just solve this this is just 10000 pound squared okay you don't even need to write the pounds So it is just 10,000 squared into this part. I can evaluate this as 2a40, okay, minus 2a60. 60 is obviously ultimate because after 20 years, the effect of selection goes away. So 2a40, this is the select value. 2a60, this is the uh, ultimate value into, I'll have the probability that a person aged 40 survives for 20 more years into v to the power of uh, now v to the power of 20 uh, will become v to the power of 40 okay like it did here so the same thing happens and this is what i have inside this thing and here i'll have a 20000 uh, squared into 20 uh, p40 okay into v to the power of 20 whole square see uh, what is happening here is you cannot use the d factors because the interest rate is also squared and we do not have uh, the d factors in such a way that uh, we can also accommodate the adjusted uh, squared interest rate so instead of that what we do is uh, we simply just use the l and um, the l factors and multiply them with the discounting factors okay so it just becomes 10000 square into 2a40 uh, is given as uh, if you check in the table 0.06775 obviously the select value okay minus uh, minus this part it is given as a zero point this is the ultimate value 23723 okay uh, this factor it becomes just i'm taking the l uh, 60 over l 40 values so it is just 9287 0.2164 divided by obviously the the l40 value that is the select value of l40 so from the left side 9854.3036 you need to learn how to use the tables i'm not going to show it to you every time okay so i, I hope you have learned it by now and then i've got a v40 so that is 1.04 to the power of minus Okay, uh, so this is what I have here and uh, for this part I just have see I, I couldn't combine this 10,000 and 20,000 here and make it into a endowment assurance function like I did in case of the expected present value because uh, the reason for that is that uh, it becomes complicated here okay since uh, everything has squared up it becomes a bit complicated so I'm solving the uh, term assurance part and the pure endowment part separately okay so let's just do that this is just 20,000 squared into this factor is obviously this again 9287.2164 divided by 9854.3036 and this is 1.04 to the power of minus 40 okay so if i evaluate this entire thing on my calculator I, so this just becomes 80 
6963915 okay that that is your answer actually okay and and if i if i try to find the variance it is just the expectation of present value squared minus expected present value whole square so it is this value 8063915 minus 8943.556 whole square and you get 1 uh, 651960 which can be written in if I write in uh, root form it is 807.44 whole square so your standard deviation is 807.44 and that's how you write the variance okay so this is uh, your answer okay so the next question is basically something we are just experts at okay that is the present value random variable and this is probably the thing that I've taught uh, the most in detail, okay? So I don't even think you'll have a doubt with this. So uh, the question is basically saying that in context of random variables, define Tx and Kx. So Tx is basically the uh, exact future lifetime of a person, okay? It is the random variable for the uh, exact future lifetime of a person. And Kx is basically the random variable for the curate future lifetime a curate future lifetime of the of a person that is uh, uh, the integer part of the lifetime okay you can explain that now let's just start start the uh, the, the second part that is just state the random variable for the following expected value so i've got the expected present values epvs are given here okay and i have to find the pvrvs okay so let's decide on the contract and then we'll determine the uh, present value random variables okay so we have done a lot of this so i don't even think you should uh, require a lot of explanation unless you haven't paid attention in what i have have been doing all this while okay so the first one is a continuous x uh, a immediate x okay so basically what is happening is there is an immediate payment as soon as a person aged x dies okay so that is what is happening okay so this would definitely be the pvrv would be we know the answer v to the power of tx okay because uh, uh, the uh, the function is discounted for the exact lifetime of the person wherever he dies okay so this is your answer um, okay because uh, if you see a timeline at time 0 he is aged x and whenever he dies uh, so let's say he dies at time 2.5 we just divide uh, we just multiply with the factor v to the power of 2.5 so the exact lifetime comes in the power of v okay uh, second part Second part is AX and it is a arrear, arrear annuity, okay, small AX. So uh, this is a, a whole life annuity payable in arrears, obviously. So uh, obviously the payment would be in terms of annuity and it would de be defined in terms of KX. I have already told you since there is no payment at time zero for such annuities. So it's just AKX and not AKX plus one. Okay, so that is something I want you to know. Okay, uh, let's, let's try C part. Part C is A, X, and N, and it's following a select modality. Okay, uh, so what is, what is this? This is a temporary annuity, right? So a uh, temporary assurance contract, right? And this is payable at the end of the year of uh, death, right? Because uh, there is no bar or, or anything over it. Okay, so basically uh, you can write it like this. Okay, it is V to the power of K X plus one because uh, wherever uh, the person dies. Uh, the payment is at the end of that year so kx plus one when kx is basically less than n and it is uh, and since this is a endowment assurance contract so it would be v to the power of n when kx is greater than equal to n so this this is our answer and and you can actually make this uh, put this x inside the bracket okay so that to denote that it is select modality right uh, so that is something you can do okay let's let's talk about uh, the last part and this might be a bit tricky. this is a deferred annuity due okay uh, so a uh, deferred annuity due this is deferred by a period of uh, let's check five years this is a deferred annuity or uh, deferred by a period of five years okay so five years deferred meant and there is a x okay so what what is going to happen uh, let's see let's see okay so the payment only starts at time 5 okay and uh, and uh, actually it starts at immediately at time 5 so uh, there is a payment of uh, one here if the person is alive and then one here six 
and then one here seven so basically what is happening here is um the person uh, there is an annuity that is starting here so it would be a due right uh, the number of, uh, the number of uh, payments would basically be kx uh, plus 1 minus 5 right because uh, uh, let's say let's say the person dies at the age of 6.5 let's say he dies at 6.5 so he would have gotten how many he would have gotten two payments by now okay um two payments so it would be a due to right and let's check with this definition uh, his curate lifetime would have been 6 his curate lifetime would have been 6 by now so uh, 6 plus 1 minus 5 right so 6 plus 1 is 7 if if he is is dying at 6.5 his curate lifetime is basically 6 so 6 plus 1 minus 5 so it's just a due right so uh, so this is your definition this is verified right and this is your annuity that goes uh, but what is happening here is this needs to be this annuity which is starting at time 5 it needs to be discounted till time 02 so there is a multiplication of factor of v5 here so this just becomes v5 okay and and uh, one more thing i'm sorry i forgot to tell you this if this person dies before time 5 there is no payment okay so this is just zero so uh, this is uh, this or zero right it is this or zero uh, whichever whichever is actually uh, greater okay uh, so if if it is here it is just a um, a due zero right wherever he dies before time five so this this can actually be written as a due kx Plus one minus five. Okay, kx plus one for any standard annuity due minus five because this is uh, a deferred one into v to the power of five. Definitely, it will come here because uh, for the reason that uh, the the annuity needs to be discounted till time zero, and this is when k kx is actually greater than five. Okay, and when kx is less than equal to five, five. Less than equal to five, it's just zero. Ah, uh, not equal to. Okay, equal to is always greater than. So when is kx is less than five, it's just zero. I can write this in a simplified form. It is a due. Uh, maximum of kx plus one minus five comma zero. Okay, maximum of either kx plus one comma five. Uh, kx plus one minus five comma zero. Okay, and uh, we do the part of five. So this is uh, I I would prefer you to end it here, okay? Because this is uh, a correct answer and it's in a very simplified form. Uh, but if you want to uh, you know uh, write it in form of one notation, it is this a du maximum of kx plus one minus five comma zero into we do the part. Okay, and you can even even simplify this further. You can write this as a du maximum of k x minus four comma zero, right? Into v to the power. So uh, that is what you can write it as, and uh, because uh, this is due to the fact that a uh, du zero is basically equal to zero. Okay, so you should know that so when there are no payments, the uh, the present value is zero. So Uh, I I just express this zero as a due zero and then I took a maximum time. So that's what you can do. Okay, guys, thank you. That's all for this video. I am uh, I'm ending this video here. There are actually four more questions left, so I'm going to do three out of them in the next video. Okay, gonna make a small video and do three questions. Uh, except that that this is actually all. Okay, so thank you and cheers.